preach the law. Glory be to the name of God. You are welcome to a moment of divine truth. And I pray that this hour the Lord will bless you and I together in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today, uh, in continuity of the message we started last week in coming of our, uh, our marriage and the decade in the marriage, we say the gracious family. When we are talking about the gracious family, we are talking about the family that is full of God's grace, that they enjoy God's grace, and that grace of God is flowing through them to the life of others to enjoy it as well in a family that people can emulate good things in their marriage, people can be blessed through their marriage. That's what we call gracious family, a family that's full of God's grace. And we have checked the word article D from the word gracious. Today we want to share the word gracious, but for the benefit of those that who do not have access to the previous episode. T from the word article D, talking about four things. Number one, truthfulness as husband and wife together. They must truthful to each other. Secondly, that's T, they must trust each other. Three, this thought, they must be transparency to each other. They must live a life of transparency. They must transfer to each other. There must not be anything hidden in their midst. They should be uh, straightforward to each other. And lastly, on the T is they must train their children. You've got to give them children, and that also connects three forms. They must train their children morally, spiritually, but academically, slash vocational. That means they must learn a particular job or professional. So, God bless you. And uh, the, uh, the next data for me is uh, H, which is saying help each other. They must help each other as husband and wife. In fact, uh, that's the reason why God create, created Eve for Adam in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Say, it's not good for a man to be to be live alone. Let me create and create and help me. So your wife is not a burden to you, it's an help me to husband. Likewise, husband must not be a burden to wife. You are help me to, to your wife. You are to help each other. And uh, another thing from the word age is harmonize the resources together. H, harmonize the resources together. The resources that come through the wife and through the husband, harmonize together to train your children and to do your uh, projects, whatever you want to achieve in life, to help one another. And E from it, which is the last one from the word D, that from last week, that they must engage in parent prayer together. They must say, and the Bible says, can two work together and say they agree. So they must agree together. So, and uh, the book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 says, but whoever two, two people agree together, touching on this man, say the Father in heaven is going to give it to them. So you must know that today, in gracious family, G is not one thing, gracious. G is not a godly family. So you don't need to tell people that I'm a Christian or I belong to social denomination. Your life must reflect Christ. Even the first Christian in the Bible is by their character and their behavior. They see God, the character of Jesus. So it must be seen in the life of husband and wife toward each other and toward humanity. In the life of children as well. That's what we say, godly family. You can read the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 18. They prove that very well, that a godly family, that's what God's been. So you'll be able to raise a godly seed. When wife and husband uh, live a godly life, so they will raise offspring that is godly. That's what God is expecting in our life. How from God gracious that you respect each other. And one philosopher say respect is reciprocal. So husband has to respect wife and wife to respect husband. That's what can bring joy and peace in the home. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, he says, Submit yourself to one another in the fear of God. Like what I've been saying before, if you have the fear of God, then you submit to your wife and the wife as well, submit to husband. So that's what the Bible says. Another word letter from the word creation is A. A means that adjust and apply godly principle. In the journey of marriage, nobody is perfect. Where I'm coming from, my upbringing is different from my wife's upbringing. Likewise, you that are hearing me. So there's area that you need to adjust. There are many things you learn from your parents that you cannot apply in your marriage, except if it's good and it's work for you. There are many things. So you must know that. Likewise, I also. So the same way, husband need to adjust and wife need to adjust. It's a daily journey. And uh, when you want to share to your wife, how what you adjust, share the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. And husband, in the area of adjustment, share the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians as well, chapter 5, verse 25 and 28. 
dealing with husband. The next thing from gracious is see, see, this principle is is what he has worked for me and is working for me in my marriage. Care for each other as husband and wife. We must care for each other. Let me read this this to our hearing. First Corinthians chapter seven verse thirty three. He said, "But he that is married, care for the things that are." Of this world, so he may please his wife, likewise, wife as well. The same way, so you have to care for each other, don't just be dependent, depend. No, care, study the emotion, know what is passing through. Care for your husband and wife, care for your uh, uh, husband. When you read the book of uh, the first Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 4, also you see where you're addressing the wife, also to care for the husband, and number. The next letter is I. I said, improve spiritually and physically in your relation with God, with each other and humanity. So it's every blessed day you must improve in your relationship. The way you are related with God today must be must far beyond the one of yesterday. And to each other also, that it must continue. You must improve and your relation to humanity. You can read the full uh, first Corinthians chapter seven verse three. Let me read down. Let the husband rather render unto the wife due benevolent like likewise also the wife unto the husband this is not benevolent that's caring showing love to each other giving to each other so you must do your relationship as well to god and the next letter from gracious oh that's open-minded open-minded to one another don't be suspicious about every action of your husband or about every action of your wife no you have to have a broad mind towards each other look at the story in the book of second king chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 about that woman that told his husband said this man i'm seeing is a man of god i want to i want her to create a room for him over there let's go a bed there a table and lamps and so whenever that man comes to this time if it's this generation you say oh you have have secret appear with that man. No, it might not be. It might not be. And the next letter is you unite together in the spirit and oneness mind pertaining to everything you are doing. Everything you are doing, everything you must agree together. You must be unite together. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And lastly, S that is to say, serve God with the gift and the resources together. So the gift that God gives you use it to serve God together like the story of uh, this man priscilla and aquila in the book of Acts, chapter 18 verse 2 the media you saw see they used to serve god together the same way god is expecting from you apply this principle and you enjoy god very well in your marriage and your marriage will not be enjoyable but will be enjoyable in the name of the lord jesus next episode i'll post it next week wednesday god bless you my name is Reverend daniel